All righty, guys. All Facts Media here. My name is Andrew Robinson, joined by my twin brother, Aaron Robinson. Today, uh, on this episode of Coach's Corner, we are joined by the current St. Peter's head men's basketball coach, Shaheen Holloway. So thank you for coming on with us today, Coach. Appreciate you guys having me, man. Thank you for having me. No, no doubt. So I'm kind of, we first want to talk about you, Coach, and, you know, your journey into, uh, into coaching, you know. First and foremost, I mean, you was a, a, a pretty, pretty good player back in high school, you know, McDonald's All-American. MVP of Donald's All American Game, went to Seton Hall, all Big East performer. So, um, kind of just talk about your, your playing career, being from the Mecca, or the, the, the second Mecca of basketball behind DC, but you know, being from New York, <laughs> you know, <laughs> and uh, just how you kind of got into coaching and you know, your playing career, and it's what, what brought you here today. Well, you know what? It's, uh, it's been a journey, you know, a good journey though. Um, I knew once I finished playing basketball, I wanted to get into coaching. That was always, always part of the plan. Um, I got into it a little early because I, I had my daughter at a young age and, you know, things started going a little sideways, so I had to stop playing and, you know, make sure I start handling my father duties. You know, um, so I got into high school coaching. I, I was a high school coach for one year, and then I went was a video coordinator at Seton Hall for one year, and then I got the assistant coaching job at Iona with Coach Willard for three years, and then we went to Seton Hall from there. So him, him and I were together for 11 years. Um, so be, before I got this head coaching job at St. Peter's, um, so it's, it's been a journey, you know, it's, it's, you know, I tell a lot of people all, all the time that I started from, from the ground up, you know, I, no one gave me anything. I, like I said, I, high school coach, video coordinator, sit the coach and start working your way, your way up. And for me, I'm glad I did it that way. Cause I got a chance to really appreciate the small things. You know what I mean? Um, you know, just being part of it and being around the game, the game that I love so much, the game that changed my life. You know, uh, this game of basketball, you know, as you guys can see, you know, um, you know, it worked wonders for you. You know, it, it took me around the world, uh, met so many p different people. Um, and I'm, I'm, still, I'm still benefiting from it right now, being a coach. You know, so uh, I've been very, I think, you know, when me, because the game did so much for me and because I'm from the inner city, you know, I, I, I recruit certain types of kids and want certain type of kids and kids that got to understand that don't take this game for granted. Like, I, like if you don't, if you're not passionate and you're not in love with this game, I don't want you, you know? So, you know, that's kind of my journey, you know, just, you know, from, you know, South Side, Jamaica, Queens, um, New York, the first Mecca of basketball, um, <laughs> you know, and, 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 you know, it just, uh, it worked out, you know, and now I'm, I'm, a, I'm across the river in Jersey, which I spent a lot of my time there in high school. You know, I went to high school at St. Pat's, you know, the powerhouse. And then I'm going to, going to Seton Hall, you know, and now I'm here. So, you know, it's just, I tell people all the time, and I think you guys trying to understand this, kind of where you go to college is kind of where you're going to live at and have your career, because that's where, you know, you know, you got all your, your resources. Yeah. You know, I've been, I came to Jersey as a ninth grader, and I haven't left. <laughs> yeah. Obviously, you know, nowadays we're in, you know, unprecedented times with this coronavirus, and it's kind of put a hold on, you know, everybody's everyday lives from the basketball world to, you know, people's real lives, you know, walking around your neighborhood or, you know, th and, you know things of that sort. So, you know, as a head men's basketball coach at St. Peter's, you know, how is this? Obviously, you guys had a chance this year, you know, to, to potentially win the MAC. You know, as you, I think you guys were a second seed in the, in the MAC and, you know, had a great chance, you know, knocked off the defending MAC champions, Iona, you know, in, in the conference tournament. And then to have it end so abruptly, you know, first, you know, what was that like, you know, having a season end, a season that was very promising? For you guys, um, what was it like having that end so abruptly due to the coronavirus? You know what? It was a it was a roller coaster, you know, because it's like, you know, you had no idea what was what was happening. It's it's funny because I don't want to bring up bad. I hope it's no bad feeling, but it's funny because Thursday, so we beat Iona Wednesday. Thursday, I was in the uh, conference room going over stuff for Ryder because we were supposed to play them. Yep. And, uh, well, sorry, I don't want to disrespect anybody. We was going to play the winner of Ryder and Niagara. Yep. And, you know, Niagara had a great year. You know, you know I, thought, I thought Greg Paul did a tremendous job. So we were supposed to play the winner of that. So we're going over film and tape and all that type of stuff. And then I go in the hallway to, to, to get a phone call and I see Baker. You know, so he's out there and he was, you know, telling me like, you know, because they had a game that night. He was like, yo, we ain't playing. I'm like, what do you mean we ain't playing? Because I don't know if you guys know, the MAC was like the last league to 
to a castle. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like in the MIAC, our conference. Yeah, yeah. You, know what I mean? and you guys. Yeah. yeah so, so Rich, the, the, you know, Rich, you know, our, our commissioner, he was he was trying to make sure it would happen. Yeah. You know, and uh, Baker was telling me that you know they they, they wasn't playing no, no matter what, and I was like, really? And I was kind of disappointed because you guys know this as a team when you rolling and you clicking on all cylinders, like like there's no guarantee this is ever going to happen again. Yeah. You know what I mean? And we was rolling. Like we, we had just won to our last 14. You know, guys was playing well. Everybody understood what was going on. You know, I thought, you know, once you get past the first game, which is the hardest game, especially for my team, I had a real young team. Yeah. And especially to get past, you know, the champs. You guys know in order to be the champs, you got to beat the champs. You know what yeah. I'm saying? And, and we kind of beat them. I was, I, I was feeling good. And then guy, I got the phone call from my AD and I was like, what? And that's kind of one of the hard things I had to do was bring the kids downstairs in the conference room and talk to them and let, let them know what was going on. And I felt awful for the seniors and I felt awful for my team because, like, like I said, man, when, you, when, you, when you have a good group, and a special group, you know it. It's a special group. And this year was a good group because it started in August. Well, excuse me. Pretty much started in June because like, we went to both summer school sessions. Like, guys was grinding. Yep. You know I mean, and we put that work in and so to have it end like that and not know why and what and who and how. So I was angry. Yep. Like that, that, that Thursday, I was angry. Yep. That Friday, I was angry. That Saturday, I understood why. Yep. No, the big picture, people start, things start happening quick. People start, and then, you know, a few friends of mine passed away from it. And I just like, oh, wow, like this is serious. Yep. You know, so, you know, to answer you guys' question, I was angry at first. And yeah. disappointed, but once I got back home and realized what was going on and seen the big picture, I thought the, the commissioner did the best, did the right job of canceling everything. So, you know, obviously going forward, you know, in the spring recruiting period, like that was canceled. We don't know what, what's going to happen with the July recruiting period and live period. Um, you know, we can't really have summer workouts right now or spring workouts. All season programs have been canceled. Kind of how this impacted your program at St. Peter's, um, this everything that's happened from, you know, since that day, you know, how does this affect the gift program? Well, it affected me hard. I had two kids transfer. Um, Mac Rookie of the Year, my point guard transfer, he went to Oregon. Um, had, you know, my big guy major transfer. And it's hard to go try to replace these guys because you can't see guys. And you, you can watch as much film as you want, but you, you, know, you know how film is. Some people send film and yeah. film is supposed to look good. You know, film is kind of like when you send your, your resume. If you don't send a good resume in to dress it up, then something's wrong with you, you know? And that's how it is with film. Like, guys are sending highlight tapes and film. I'm like, yeah, well, I want to see people with my own two eyes. I want to see guys, you know, when things are not going well, how you act with your teammates, how you are on the bench, you know? Like, are you a guy that's going to give 110, 110 effort? Are you going to dive on the floor, going to lose balls? Are you going to be a leader on the court? Like, I like to see those type things. And right now on film, you really can't yeah. see those things. So now you're trying to recruit from online and then you gotta try to talk to kids. And you guys know, man, kids don't wanna answer the phone. You no, know, nobody wanna FaceTime. So everybody wanna wanna text. So now I gotta try to get to recruit by texting. And what else I'm gonna say in text? I'm gonna send five paragraphs long and they gonna read the first paragraph and don't read the rest. You know what I mean? So it's tough right now. You know, you know, my program is affected hard by it because like I said, we had a good young crew and I wanted to keep everybody together. And I'm I don't wanna sound selfish. I'm I'm sure a lot of programs are affected by it. But right now we're talking about our minds, you know, and, and um, it's tough because I just don't know what's going to happen. I have no idea what's going to happen. I think that my guys benefited from summer school academically and athletically. Athletically because you have, you have to be there and lift and work out and get better. Now, now we can't do that. Yeah. I need, you just never know. Man. Yeah. Now, obviously, you know, like you said, some of the workouts have already been canceled. You know, it's it's hard to get in contact with guys through, you know, FaceTime, text, you know. So how have you been able to kind of, you know, check in on guys, make sure they're getting their schoolwork in, make sure they're, you know, staying in shape, you know, if, you know, um, if at all. You know, what have you tried to implement, you know, to, to try to keep tabs, you know, uh, on your players during this time period? Well, you know, the, the, the NCAA got some, some crazy rules, you know. Um, so you could do a Zoom call with guys, check and see how they're doing, but you can't watch them, but we can't do a Zoom workout together. Yeah. We can't do stuff like I mean, which is to me don't make sense because you think about it. Right now, if we was in school, we we will be allowed to do stuff because you got those eight weeks. 
You know what I mean? So the fact that you can't do that. So I can't hold nothing over God's head. I imagine guys are you working out. Yes, coach. But are they? Who knows? So, but, but, but there's also, it's a fine line because I don't want my guys going outside because it's unknown out there. Yeah. So I'm telling guys to stay in shape or actually stay in shape, but, but then you can't monitor it because, and I don't want them to go outside running, doing stuff. So like, if you don't have stuff in your house, if you don't have bands or weightlifting or weights or dumbbells, like what can you really do? Abs, you know what I'm saying? I'm gonna look like Depot. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Stop it, sure, baby, sure. Um, so I mean, like you said, I mean, obviously, also something that's been in the news recently is uh, this this one-time transfer waiver that is supposed to get voted on. Um, I think end of May, June time period. So I mean, this. This might have a profound impact on mid-major basketball, low-major basketball with guys trying to move up. You already mentioned that you had a player transfer um, and move up to, to Oregon. So, I mean, how do you think that this rule will affect mid-major basketball, low-major basketball? I mean, and even high school kids that may not be able to get recruited now because schools are going to say, I mean, I'm going to take this second or third year transfer as opposed to a 17, 18-year-old kid, you know? So, I mean, what are, you, what are your thoughts on this, on this waiver that might get passed? So, we look at everything, right? And NCAA put a, a freeze on recruiting and restrictions on you can't work out on Zoom, you can't do this, you can't do that. Okay, then why they ain't freeze transfers? Then? You know, don't think about it, right? Like kids are allowed to transfer and do this, do that, but how I'm going to replace those guys right now? You can't, yeah. you know. And, I, and it, trust me, I'm more, I'm more for the players, man. You know, I don't, I don't want a kid that don't want to be here. You know, yeah. that's just how it is. But to answer your question, um, if this rule passed, it would be, I think, mid-major and low-major basketball is over. You know, because you think about it, you know, you have, you have a kid, two things. You can't coach kids the way you want to coach them. Because if you coach them with any type of passion, any type of thing, they leave it. If back in the days, kids used to come in and, Learn from seniors and then as sophomores and juniors play, the kids don't play as freshmen, they leaving. You know, so th that's why the portal is what, a thousand people right now? Yeah. And you gotta think about it. I read something last, last year where I think there was like 65 people or 60, 65 kids that was, that was in the portal last year that didn't find a school. Really? Like, think about that for a second. Like, I don't know, I might be off on a number, but there was kids that didn't find a school last year. So now there's more this year, and all this stuff is going on, and you don't know what's going to happen. You don't know if certain institutions going to ask coaches only bring in 10 scholarship kids because money. Yep. Like, so you don't know. So you got all these kids in the portal right now. And, and now think about it. Now you got high school kids going to the G League. I mean, it's, it's about to get yep. crazy. Yep. It's about to get to the point where, like, you're going to have a player, and you know they're only going to be for one year, if yep. that. So how can you continually have success as a program if your kids, if your top two, three, four players are leaving every year? Yep. And not just leaving, I'm talking about they taking tremendous jumps. Yep. I mean, you're going from the mat to the, you know, whatever. But you know, you, you guys know what I'm talking about. I don't want to sound like a hater. Because yeah. I'm not, I'm actually proud of, I'm, I'm, I'm happy for Aaron, you know, he got a, a good school and I'm happy for him. But you got, you know, God taking jumps that's unheard yeah. of. So to answer your question, I think it's going to be terrible for a uh, low major and mid-major basketball because, like, the Power Five schools or the Big East or other schools that are not a Power Five, they're just going to come and recruit from us. Like, they're not even going to go out recruiting. They're just going to come recruit from the low major, mid-majors. Yep. And you would take a, a kid who played and have some experience before you take a high school senior, yep. unless you're just a big-time player. But seriously, they're just going to come recruit from us. Yep. And then what are we going to do? Go recruit from the Division Two? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Seriously. So I think it's, I, I don't think it should pass, but the problem is what people understand is the people that's pushing for this is not basketball, it's football. Everything is generated by football. College sports is generated by football because football makes the money. So football coaches want this. Yeah. Trust me, no, no, if you survey 10 coaches from, I don't care what league it is, they don't want this. Because kids can leave from a, a high major too. Yeah. Like you got kids that were, think about it, you got some kids this year that played 30 minutes a game 
They're leaving. Like, where are you going? <laughs> where you want to go? Like, you're playing 30 minutes a game in a high major school. Where you want to go? Yeah. You know, so I think it's I think it's going to be really, 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 like, really bad. Yep. And my a little bit in your answer just now. This this uh, rule is getting ready to get passed with where these elite high school prospects, you know, can go right to the G League, you know, right from high school. Obviously, you were an All American in high school, so you would have fit into that category, you know, coming out of high school. You know, how do you think this rule is going to impact, you know, college basketball? You got guys like your Jalen Green, your Isaiah Todd, that are skipping college and going right, you know, making half a million, a million dollars right away. Well, well, it's, everything's going to get impact because you know, and I'm I'm all for players making money. You know, like we we just got to come up with a the best solution in college of how we could pay the players. I don't know what that is. I have no idea. I got an idea. You know, I was always said like me and my ex boss who's Kevin Williams, the head coach at C right now, we were talking about this. And I, our thing was, you know what? Let the players earn ten 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 thousand dollars a year. Right? So for four years, so if you stay for four years, that money you can't test that money unless you, you graduate. Because you gotta think about it. When kids graduate, a lot of kids graduate with nothing. They, they broke, right? Yeah. So now this way you got $40,000 to start your life off. It don't sound like much, but it's something. Yeah. So now you got 40, and you can invest that 40,000 yeah. each year. So $10,000 a year, you stay for four years. Now you invest that, now that might turn to 80 or 100,000, yeah. right? So now you, when, when you graduate from school and you're done playing sports, now you got that in your bank, in your bank account to start your life with. Yep. And, and guys that, that leave early don't need it because they go to the NBA to, to, to make money. Yeah. You know, so that's you know one of one of my solutions. You know, that's just me. I'm just a basketball coach. What the hell do I do I know? You know yeah. what I'm saying? But but you know, just trying to find a solution. But there's nothing that's gonna be equal. Because even though right now, same thing with this high major, though that's like the course of attendance. There's some schools that's paying five thousand dollars a semester for course of attendance. And there's max schools that paying shit. $1,200 for the, for the year. Yeah. You know, if that. Yeah. So how is it fair? Like, what's the fair thing that you could do from each school? Yeah. Each conference. Because if you pay high majors X amount, then mid-majors can't pay that because they don't have the money. Yeah. And then why would we get any kids? Yeah. So to answer your question, it's crazy right now. It's going to be crazy. Um, you know, when I was coming out, you know, obviously we had, God, you know, God bless the dead. You know, we, we, in my class, you, you had Kobe, Jermaine O'Neal, Steve Jackson. It was like four players from my class that went straight to the NBA. Yeah. You know, and, and that never really, really happened. Yeah. And then things kind of like went down the hill and then it stopped doing it. And then Tracy McGrady did it. Then the special ones would do it. Yeah. But now you got guys going to the G League and doing this and doing that. And like... I mean, now what happens in three years if those guys are not successful? Or two years? Yep. So now that $500,000 that, that you got, that you're going to get a crib, you're going to try to help your mother out, you're going to get two, three cars, now you finish? Because the percentage is going to say some of these guys are not going to make it. Yep. Right? Think about it. You got high school kids playing against grown men yep. that's starving, that's hungry, that's been in the G League for two or three, four years. And this is their chance. You think they're gonna let a high school kid come in and you crazy? Yeah. <laughs> think about it. Yeah. You feel me? Yeah. I mean, think about it, man. Think about it. the last couple of years. You had all these guys that's getting drafted, second round, first round. You hear these guys that have big names and they don't get a chance. And then after two or three years, you don't hear about them no more. Yeah. Oh, it's definitely tough. Um, so I mean, you're you're a guy that, you know, you were very decorated as a player, you know. You won the Mac Coach of the Year this year and only your second year at St. Peter's. Um, you know, how do you think you have been able to kind of have immediate success? You, your team was the top of first place and up getting the second seed in the Mac tournament this year. Um, how do you think you've been able to, you know, have such immediate success, um, you know, in, in, in coaching? Um, and obviously, with obviously going back to your playing career, just what do you think has gone into that, you know, and, and you've been able to have such success early on? Well, you know, it, it's – that's, that's not an easy answer because you got to understand, like, if you know me and understand me, like, I have the biggest chip on my shoulder possible. And I was like that when, when I was a player. You know, being 5'10 and, you know, playing against guys, you 
you know, seven feet, six eleven, six one, six four, six five. So I have a chip on my shoulder. Like I want to be the best at everything I do. And I and I carry that over to coaching. And the one thing I tell recruits all the time is I'm not the best coach in the world. Trust me. There's a lot of coaches out there that's better than me. I'm still learning. But the one thing I will say is nobody's gonna outwork me. Nobody's gonna outwork me. Nobody's gonna work harder than me with you on your individual game and develop you as a person and as a player. That that After we win or lose, I'm in the office at three o'clock in the morning watching the team we got played on Sunday. Trying to try trying, trying to get better, trying to get an edge. And my staff is like that. Like I, I pick guys on my staff that understand is we're not punching the clock. Like we got work to do. Like we the underdogs. Like we gotta take that approach. So that's what we did. And I, I kind of recruit like that. I want hungry, have something to prove that's over that's you know, they got over recruited. You know, that people that wasn't looking at them, that played with a chip on their shoulder, and like, that's starving. So my pitch to guys all the time is, if you love the game of basketball, I am the best coach to play for. If you don't love the game, I'm the worst coach to play for. If you want to be coached, I'm the best coach to play for. If you don't want to be coached, I'm not. Because if you watch me, I, I coach with passion. You know, that's the same way I play. So I want guys like that and look at my team my team, they take on my personality, you know? So, like, I'm, I'm cool with everybody. I'm cool with all the players in the league. I'm cool with all the coaches. But on game day, I don't know you. I don't want to know you. you no, know, we ain't cool. You no, know, it's business. You know, we could be like, we're going to war. You know, that's put our hard hat on. That's, that's trapped up by Tim's, and let's go. And if you look at my team, that's our personality. That's what we had this year. Like, we was, like, my team was junkyard dogs. Like, we didn't, we didn't have no stars. Nobody averaged more than eight points a game. Yeah. You know, I play 11 guys, double figure minutes. Everybody told me, you bugging, they ain't gonna work. It worked. <laughs> you know, the media, you know, I guess it's, the media is funny because they can hurt you, they can help you hurt you. And I, and I love the media, you know, those guys, you know, they, they've been good to me, but they also, when you, when, you, when you put out in the media, you know, guys don't want to go to St. Peter's because nobody want to play half a game or 20 minutes, like, guys, read that stuff. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, it might have hurt me, but at the same time, it works for me. So if you watch this, we, we play 11 guys, double figure minutes. I thought we wore teams out. You know, we pressed, you know, we, we, we had fun. And I told guys all the time, if you're not actually come out the game, that means that you ain't playing hard. Yep. So to answer your question, I think we, we just outwork people, man. I just, I'm, I'm hungry, man. Yep. I'm hungry, I'm starving, bro. I've been as a coach for, you know, 12, 13 years. You know, I was, I was, you know, I paid my dues. I, you know, I was under a, a guy that helped me a lot. Kevin Willard helped me a lot. He groomed me a lot to get this position. And now I'm here. I don't want my first job to be my last job. So I'm working my butt off to make sure I keep it. Yeah. Now, you know, obviously you have, have had success, you know, early on in your, in your tenure at St. Peter's. So what is your goal? You know, what is your, you know, where do you want to see St. Peter's program get, you know, while you are, you know, at the helm there? When you look, when you look at you know programs like, I sing them out because I think that this program. Look at a program like Iona, like that's what you want to be every year. You, you want to be competitive every year. You, you want to be having a, the chance to try to win the whole thing, or be the top every year. And that's why I kind of want. I just want my guys to compete, um, try to be you know in that top three, top four every every year because anything can happen. You're in the top three, top top four. Yeah. And you know you look at a program like that because they did it. Every year, consistently, you know, every year you look at them like, I don't know, like, geez, you know, now having a guy like Rick, Rick Pitino, like, geez, you, know, you went from Tim Close, who was a great coach, who did it, now, you look, now, now, now you're bringing Coach P, you know, like, you know, so, you know, the guys I got to battle against, is, is, it's, it's hard, like, this league is hard, man, you guys was in this league, you know, and people don't understand, it's great coaches in this league, man, you know, you know, Baker's a great coach, King Rice, you know, uh, Kevin Baggett, Steve Massiello, and then, then, then you got young guys. Calm did a tremendous job this year. They finished 
number one. Yeah. You know, Greg at Niagara came in and did a tremendous job. You know, Reggie's a tremendous coach. You know, Coach Young that just came in for Fairfield, a tremendous coach. I mean, think about it. Coach Dunn been doing it for the longest. He's, he's big time. You know, so every coach in this league is big time. Hope I ain't forgetting nobody. Because I ain't trying to big time nobody. Hope I ain't forgetting nobody. But, you know, it's just everybody, everybody's good, man. Yeah. So, I mean, so I just want my guys to try to compete every year, man. That's it. Yes, sir. So, I mean, um, on a lot of note here, you know, obviously, like I said, you know, you were down the American. You know, you played with guys like you mentioned, Kobe, Jermaine O'Neal. Can't hear you. Oh, sorry. Here we go. Can you hear me now? Yep. All right, cool. So I'm saying, um, you know, obviously you you were a big time player. You know, obviously you you mentioned playing against guys like Kobe, Jermaine O'Neal. Like, okay. You know. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So I um, mean, give us kind of like give us a uh, you know one one of your most memorable stories from back in your playing days, maybe going up against like a Kobe or somebody like that. Just give us a, a player in New York. Give us kind of one of your most memorable moments uh, from when you were a player. Well, you know what? It's, it, like it's, people ask that question all the time. I really don't have one particular because there's so many. You know, I think, you know, back in my days, not to take it away from this era, but, but back in my days when you played, you played, like it wasn't so many AU teams right now. So right now everybody got an AU team, right? So, yeah. so like right now my son, I put him on a team and things don't go well. I'm taking him off that team. I'm starting my, I'm starting my own team. Right? That, that's what people do, right? Yeah. So back then it wasn't like that. Now, back then you had eight, nine big time players on one team. And it was like five teams and then y'all play against each other. You play against the best. You, you couldn't hide. Yeah. Right now you can, you can kind of hide. Because now it's Nike, Adidas, you know, unknown. Right now it was just, back then it was just one. There was no Nike, there was no deal, no commerce. It was everybody, everybody played against each other, all the best. Yeah. So when you have that, now you, you have great moments. Like I didn't play against everybody. I didn't play against Stephon Marbury when it was St. Patrick against Lincoln. He's the number one point guard, senior number one point guard, number one junior point guard. And the, we played at Fordham and the place is sold out. And everybody's going crazy. Then the, the first play of the game, I did an NL crossover spin and he fell. And the game stopped for 10 minutes. Because it was crazy. You know what I mean? But that's the type of stuff. Like, I got a thousand stories like that. You know, he got a thousand stories. Like, he had like 35 that game. He played tremendously well. You know, but it's like, you know, each day I could like come up like, oh, wow. Like, like I look at this, this picture right here, right? So this picture right here, this is all New York City top point guards ever. And every point guard from every era is in here, from Dwayne Pearl Washington, who, who passed away, to Ross Strickland, to Kenny Anderson, to Tiny Archibald, to Kenny Smith, Andre Bell, like, like stuff like that, like it don't happen anymore. You know, and, and not that I'm looking at stuff, but I look at this right here, like this is significant to me. That's what I want to show y'all. Like I look at this ball right here. Did you guys see this ball? Yeah, we see. So this ball right here, this is a McDonald's All-American ball. Yeah. Every player signed it. Yeah. And just so funny because if you look right here, can you guys see that? Who is that? I can't even see it. I, I, I can't, can't read it. it. So yeah, I can see his signature, but I can't read it. Yeah, because he wrote it so big because he was very anal back then. That's Kobe. <laughs> That's Kobe. Yeah. So you see Kobe's name right there. Yeah. Right. Yep. So, but so, but when you but when when you see that, it's 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 a lot of things that it's like, you know. I guess I'm showing you guys that because it's like that picture right there that afternoon I sat there as a little kid like like a little kid in the candy store because I'm, I'm around all these great players that I analyzed growing up right. you know Tiny Archibald Dwayne Pearl Washington the list Ross Strickland Kenny Anson let's go on and we sitting there talking that was um in New York and like a of course from um what's the famous park uh, Central Park, there you go. And, and you know, it was, it was actually a movie was, was made on top of there too. And we sitting there and we talking for like for seven, seven hours, all of us, just talking about their day, their, their, their era, my era, different eras. And that was like a moment in time for me because I'm a basketball junkie. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Look at the McDonald's American game, man. Look at that game we had. Everybody in that game made the pros. Yeah. You know, like, like, think about that for a second. Like, it's just like, you know, I, I had a play in that game that I think that got me the MVP where Kobe, got, he got a rebound and threw it up to me. I took the pass and stride and I threw it between my legs. 
to uh, Vasu Ethemar, and he dumped on Lester Earl. And the, the place went, we was playing in Pittsburgh, the Civics and the place went nuts. Like it was just, like, but like that play is like a significant play. So it's just so many different plays. And I think, you know, for me at Seton Hall, in my senior year, we made the tournament. And I, I, I had the game winning shot at the buzzer to beat Oregon to Pittsburgh in the Sweet 16. Like that was a tremendous moment in my life. Yeah. And then the next game, I broke my ankle in the first five minutes of the game. Jeez. So it's crazy. Hey, man. It is what it is. But it's so many moments, man. But, you know, um, so I don't really have one moment. Yeah. I think that Forno moment was actually pretty good, though, because, you know, Stefan played really well, and there was so much hype in that game. And the first play of the game, I, I floored him, and it was, it was like the rock and roll. <laughs> Hey man, I will, it, it, it definitely a good thing to not have you know one got got so many to choose from. It's uh, definitely a good thing. So you know, we thank you for joining us today, man, and wish you guys the best of luck at St. Peter's and your continued coaching career, man. We appreciate you for sitting down with us today. Well, I, listen, man, I appreciate you guys, man. Success and continued success on your guys' journey and path in life, man. And if there's anything I could do to help you guys out, please don't 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 hesitate. Sure, Coach. Thanks a lot, Coach. Appreciate it, man. You guys, man. Hey, listen, man, you, you guys be safe out there, man. Y'all see your families, all right? Yes, we'll do, we'll and, do when, y'all see, when, when this is over and y'all got a good bravo, tell them to come see me, all right? All right, got you. Man. Got you, man. <laughs> hey, last thing. Debo, see you later, all right? <laughs> <laughs> I'll see you later, Coach. All right, all right man. Later, y'all. Peace. All right, man. Later. Appreciate you, man.